In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a slightly different topic than what I usually talk about, and today's topic is going to be humidity levels and how it affects pianos. We have found that people say that pianos from California are the best pianos and the most long-lasting pianos. They have the longest lifespans and they usually have the least problems of um, any piano, especially when you compare them to pianos that perhaps say d uh, dwell or live in the East Coast. And um, that is because of a few different reasons that I'm going to be talking about today. But from our experiences, we have found that pianos that are in the valley tend to not last as well as pianos that are found more on the coast. This piano that I'm sitting in front of here uh, came from Presidio Heights in San Francisco, and it was built in 1995, and it's in perfect condition. There's pretty much nothing wrong with it. There's no major issues anywhere in the piano. However, we have found other pianos from the same time period in the valley, about 200 miles away, that have had major issues, such as soundboard cracks, bridge cracks, and other issues in the pianos that would make someone go, uh, I don't want to buy that piano, it's kind of dodgy. So what is the reason for these issues? Why do the pianos on the, uh, on the coast of California last longer than the pianos in the valleys of California? And the reason for this is the humidity, as well as the way people uh, use the air conditioners in their homes. Air conditioners affect the humidity by uh, taking a water out of the air. And in fact, I've heard of people that use the water that the air conditioner takes out of the air to actually water their plants. They run a little hose that the water drains into and then the water just goes right into their plants and automatically waters them. So air conditioners draw a lot of water out of the air. And in the, on the coast of California, where it's cooler, People usually don't use their air conditioners unless it's an incredibly hot day because the summers simply don't get hot enough to need to use an air conditioner. However, in the valley, when it routinely gets to be like 110 degrees in the summertime, you kind of need to use an air conditioner in your home. And that is why um, the pianos tend to dry out, the wood tends to shrink, and they often end up getting cracks and other major issues in the pianos. There are several different ways to control humidity. There is a special device that is called a damp chaser that you can install in your pianos uh, that helps regulate the humidity within the piano and keeps it stable. There are also other things you can use like dehumidifiers as well as use air conditioners to your advantage if you want to bring the humidity down in a more humid climate. There are several advantages and drawbacks to all of these different situations, um, particularly with the damp chaser. If they're used incorrectly, they can actually damage a piano, and even when they're used correctly, sometimes a little something can go wrong and then they can affect the piano. Uh, one of our close friends has a damp chaser installed in his wonderful piano, and it always works very well. However, one day his wife actually needed to charge her phone, so she goes over to the outlet, unplugs the damp chaser, she didn't know what it was, she just unplugged it, plugs in her phone, and then leaves. However, the damp chaser suddenly stopped working because it was unplugged, and immediately the piano went out of tune. And the most annoying part about the whole situation was that the piano had just been tuned pretty much a few days earlier. So he comes out, gets the piano tuned, and then it immediately goes out of tune because of an accident. And while I'm on that topic, I would like to add that uh, what I was saying earlier about temperature uh, changes, we have found that temperature changes by themselves uh, do not seem to affect the tuning and stability of your piano. We don't heat our house at night, and sometimes it can, especially in the winter time, it can get quite cold in the house, and then we have to warm it up over the day, and then it gets nice and toasty midday. In the summertime, it can get kind of cool in the house, and then get really hot uh, during the day. And uh, it doesn't seem to affect the piano, it's the humidity that really affects the piano's tuning. During the right six months out of the year, you can pretty much not tune the piano at all, especially if you're not really, really worried about each individual note being in tune. However, during the wrong six months, you're gonna to need to tune the piano uh, several times because during the spring and during the fall, the humidity kind of shifts and swings. And in that time, the piano is going to go out of tune. So if you tuned your piano just before the springtime or just before the fall, it's going to go out of tune, just like the situation I just mentioned earlier with the damp chaser. And then you're going to have to uh, either tune the piano again yourself or have to pay someone to come out and tune the piano, which would be pretty annoying. 
So my personal goals that involve humidity are going to be, once I get this piano, as well as my other pianos, back into the studio in Tennessee, I'm going, my goal is going to be to regulate the humidity to around uh, 60%, maybe a little bit higher than that. And on a note about the other two pianos, I just wanted to add, a few people have asked me what happened to the SF-10 that I used to use as a practice piano, and they asked if I had gotten rid of it or whatnot. I have not gotten rid of it. The SF-10 is going to be going into the, uh, the house that we're going to be living at in Tennessee. The Schiedmeyer is going to be the practice piano for the studio, and of course the Steinway D Concert Grand is going to be the recording piano in the studio. Now about the Steinway D, a while back I filmed a video about buzzes and other extraneous noises uh, in your piano and that your piano can produce. And I mentioned at the time that my piano did not have any buzzes. However, shortly after that I discovered a very strange buzz that came and went in the piano. And after doing a little bit of experimenting and touching different parts in the piano and going around trying to locate the sound, I discovered that it is a humidity-related buzz, and I've never quite experienced anything like this before. There's no cracks or anything in the piano, but when the humidity drops below 60%, as it can in the foothills here of California, in the mornings it's usually around 60 but then later at night it can drop down to like 40%. Uh, usually high 40s, low 50s, something like that. And during that time is when the piano uh, can buzz. Uh, it doesn't particularly seem to like jazz chords when I do those. It really gets mad and starts buzzing. I tightened up a nose bolt in the piano, and that has taken most of the sound of the buzz away, but it still does buzz faintly when the humidity drops below 60%. That is one of my main goals that I want to keep in the studio, and that's the reason that I want to have the humidity stable above 60%, because a buzz such as that uh, would be pretty much... It would make the piano pretty much impossible to record if you're playing it and something inside the piano is rattling and buzzing. So that is the main reason that I want to keep the humidity stable, also because a stable humidity means a longer-lasting piano.